and say okay, and you see he just assembles it in just as pretty as you please. Now, what's keeping it there? So just like we had to constrain a sketch, if I go move component and I pick this thing, he's gonna let me move this all over and it can get all cattywampus any which way. Don't do that, by the way, okay? So what we need is we need it to actually stick there. We need it to stick in space. So I'm gonna control Z that. And just like we constrain 2D geometry with sketch, constraint, uh, sketch constraints, we're gonna assemble this with a, an assembly constraint, sort of the 3D equivalent of, of sketch constraints. And you'll see those located right here, the assembly constraints. Click on that, and what we want to do is just fix this thing in space. So that little ground symbol, fix. And the object we want to constrain is that. And he's done it, okay? Just by clicking on it, he's already gone through and, and applied it. You can just barely see it there. Let's see if I can turn this on up. There, you can see that little ground constraint has been stuck onto this. Sometimes those are a little hard to see. But there it is. Uh, if I go to my constraints navigator, I can see that that fixed constraint is right there and that it is constraining this thing called the spool. So now when I go to uh, let's see, back to home, move component, try to move this thing. He says, uh, you know, that's it's actually stuck there. That's fixed. And he says, are you sure you want to do that? And it used to be he didn't even ask you that. He would just say, no, you can't move that. It's fixed. Now he'll let you override that, but we don't want to do that. We say, no, we'll, we're happy with it fixed. All right, I'm gonna shift gears for a second. Since this is our first file, you would expect me to go ahead and put the O-rings on here, but I'm gonna skip ahead. We're not gonna put the O-rings on here yet, okay? What I wanna do is create the other assembly, and I want to go ahead and put this into our other assembly. This is not just this spool anymore, remember. This is an assembly that contains the spool in. All right, so I'm gonna make another, uh, Another one of these, another assembly. I call it last time. I call this main assembly. That'll do. And you see, as soon as I start with a new assembly, he's saying, "Oh, you're assembling. Okay, you want to uh, you want to add some components." Okay. Now. It might be that that would make good sense. You know, a lot of times that is going to be the case. That is what we want to do. But when we put in this, uh, we're doing the main assembly, that spool sub-assembly needs somewhere to go before we put it in there. We don't want to just assemble it into empty space. We want to put it into the, to the valve body. We want that block present. So I'm just going to cancel out of that. Uh, not cancel, that was the wrong thing, sorry. I want to add the, the block itself. And in this case, I want it to go to the absolute origin. Okay. Now, has this been constrained three-dimensionally? Is this constrained in space? No, it's just located in space. It hasn't been, it hasn't been fixed. So my assembly constraints and add a fixed constraint to it. That'll keep it from sliding around on me. All right. So now the real fun begins. We want to assemble in that sub-assembly. Well, you know what, you know, what would be more fun? Let's just put the, uh, put this end plate on so you can see how this works. So add component, we're gonna open up the end plate. And this is the first one we're gonna assemble in by constraints. So we wanna come down here under positioning, 
change from absolute origin to constraints. By constraints. By the way, there was a really big, uh, a really big change in the way the assemblies worked. I think it was before, maybe it was in, in eight and a half was the last one that was done the old way. But a pretty big con uh, change in the constraints. I had videos for the older ways if you find yourself using an older version of uh, NX. But by constraints, and we'll just say apply, we don't want a fixed constraint. What we want is a touch align constraint. So you see these, these various ones in here? Go with touch align. To get to here, when I was act, when I told him that I, uh, the method of positioning, when I first put it in, he asked, you know, where we put in uh, absolute origin earlier, I changed that pull down to say by constraints. Here, I can go all the way back out. So cancel, forget that. Okay, so here I am. I want to assemble in the end plate, end plate, and I, under positioning, which may be, uh, well, no, that's open done. I want to say by constraints. Say apply. And he says fix. No, we want touch align. Now you can do preferred touch, in, which is sort of the uh, equivalent of infer when you're doing like an infer dimension. You see that little lightning bolt on there. That means let me guess what you want. Uh, I tend to have butter block being more specific. Uh, I don't know, it's just maybe it's more like the old way of doing things. You can try preferred touch if you want. I'm going to try, I'm just going to do this touch. And I'm going to say, I want this face to be, to touch <laughs> this face. All right, well, where did he put him? I don't know. She was... Oh, okay. So I didn't have preview in main and component in uh, main window turned on, but there it is. So you can, this is an option while you're assembling. Sometimes it gets in the way to actually see it here. You can turn on and off this little preview window. This lets you see it in its own native uh, file. This lets you see it in the file that we're working on. All right. So I'm just, I'm, I'm going to say okay. You might want to just hang out there for a minute. I want to show you something though at this point. I can take this piece now and I can move it. I'll go to move component and you see I can slide it around but notice that it's always going to be touching that face. I can slide it left and right. I can rotate it around but I can't pull it off. You see? It's stuck on there. It's aligned. It's, uh, it's, those two faces are stuck to each other. But I can sling it around however I want to as long as it doesn't involve uh, moving it off of that face. I'm going to go back to my assembly constraint. And now I want to add uh, an infer center axis. I'll say this cylindrical hole should line up with this cylindrical hole. And there he puts it straight on the middle, dead center like that. And I want to do one more. I'm just going to make these two surfaces parallel. You should be parallel to you. Now, you might have <coughs> wondered why I didn't just go in and make all of these holes concentric with each other. And the fact is that I've done this enough times that I know it's not, uh, this is not a perfect model. And that you can over constrain it. All right, so if I were to come in here and try to add something like, uh, gee, these two need to be, be concentric, you and you, see it all goes red on me. Okay, so that's not what I want to do. Maybe, what, make it all go red again? <laughs> Put this thing in? Oh, too late. All right, so I'm gonna add a component. And it's going to be this end plate. It's going to be by constraints. I'm going to do a touch align, specifically a touch. 
And I want this surface to touch that surface. I'm gonna do an infer center axis, make this <coughs> align with that. And then finally a parallel to make that parallel to say that. Is you uh, sending both uh, both circles or right? well, both both holes on the pieces right? Uh, yeah, I picked to do the inverse center axis, this middle hole on the end plate, and the middle hole down the whole thing. Yeah. Then yeah, when you aligned, you clicked the bottom surface, and what else? I did a I did a parallel between this bottom and this. 